Hey, what's up guys? It's Dimitar Dima from Sompair.com and today we're going to talk about creatine. Creatine is one of the most researched supplements on the market and although it has been proven to be very safe and efficient, the speculations and myths surrounding it are more than any other supplement. Whether it is due to the misinformation or improper dosages, this supplement has won some bad reputation despite its many benefits. The purpose of this video is to give you a realistic view of what creatine is, when and how much to take it to make the most out of it. Ok, let's start basic, very basic. We all have natural amounts of creatine in our bodies, the vast majority of which is stored in the muscles. The body creates it from the three amino acids L-arginine, glycine and L-methanine. Additionally, you can get creatine from food, the richest sources of which are red meat, such as beef, fish, such as salmon, tuna and eggs. Keep in mind though that the amounts of creatine in food are very little. For example, in 1 kg of beef, you get only about 5 grams of creatine. Now we have ruled out the rubbish story that creatine is some type of anabolic steroid, we can get a bit more technical. In essence, creatine is an organic acid that helps supplying energy to all cells in the body. Although creatine provides many health benefits, it is best known for contributing to muscle's energy output. To better understand the purpose of creatine, you need to know how your body works. When you exercise, your body produces energy in one of three ways, ATP, CP pathway for power activities lasting a few seconds, glycolytic pathway for speed and high intensity workouts and oxidative pathway for endurance activities such as marathon running. The pathways that we are going to examine here is the ATP-CP pathway. ATP or adenosine triphosphate is the cell's energy source. It is a molecule that contains three phosphate molecules, hence the name triphosphate. The release of one of those three phosphate molecules provides the body with energy for movement. The problem here is that the amount of ATP ready for usage is limited. It will be enough for one or two explosive movements but then that's it, all your ATPs are gone. Therefore, ATP needs to be resynthesized to be used for further actions. This is where creatine or creatine phosphate comes into play. The process looks like this. ATP releases one phosphate molecule in order to release energy and turns into ADP, adenosine diphosphate, with two phosphate molecules. Creatine phosphate lends one phosphate molecule to ADP and completes it back to ATP. The cycle then repeats until the body runs out of CP which usually takes maximum to a minute. Although you have 3 times more CP than ATP, studies show that ATP is fully restored within 3.5 minutes while CP is fully replenished within 8 minutes. Supplementing proper amounts of creatine can increase the level in the body by 25%. By having higher levels of CP in your system, you can continue the process for slightly longer which leads for a workout with higher intensity and more room for improvement. Simply put, more gains. There are many types of creatine but we will concentrate on the most basic and widely used form as well as the most researched of all, creatine monohydrate. Different companies constantly come up with new cutting edge creatine formulas but the truth is that most of them just add extra stuff to enhance digestibility of creatine, give you an extra boost and so on. If you want to stick to the purest form, then creatine monohydrate is for you. It contains 88% creatine and just 12% water. In addition to that, it shows very good digestibility by the majority of people, as long as it is taken in proper quantities of course, and it is also quite cheap. In general, there is no point in paying extra for a top brand creatine monohydrate, as they are all pretty much the same. Numerous researches confirm the following benefits, increased strength, increased endurance, increased protein synthesis or in other words more protein will be absorbed and utilized for muscle growth, reduced muscle damage and inflammation which means that basically you are speeding up muscle recovery and positive impact on growth hormone which is highly anabolic. Whether you will experience some or most of the effects will largely be determined on an individual basis. It is also worth mentioning that in those experiments, the scientists compared individuals who were taking creatine versus those that were taking a placebo. Therefore, the individual who takes creatine will have increased strength compared to the one who doesn't supplement it. 
Now bear in mind that this is not to say that creatine provides the best strength and endurance benefits from all the supplements or that it can give you a better recovery than other recovery supplements. Creatine has been proven to be most effective for workouts with relatively short duration, such as workouts within the 45 to 70 minutes range. In other words, creatine can enhance anaerobic training, but does little, if anything, for aerobic training. Studies show that CP content is enough to maintain ATP during steady state endurance activities, thus leading to the results that creatine fails to show improvement in prolonged cardiovascular exercising. So if you practice a type of sport that doesn't require a burst of speed and power, such as marathon running, then you won't see much of the benefits of creatine that I've just mentioned. When you first start taking creatine, or if you haven't taken it for quite some time, you're often advised to have what is called a loading phase. The loading phase is also recommended on most product labels. Basically, it consists of taking higher amount of creatine in the first week in order to stock up the reserves in your body. This comes from the presumption that in the initial stage, your body can absorb and store more creatine than later on, when the reserves are already full. The recommended amount is usually 10 to 20 grams a day in the first week and then lowering it down to 5 to 10 grams a day. This might not be a great option though. As already explained, your body has a certain amount of creatine and is able to produce some on its own. So when you train or you're under some stress, you increase the demand for creatine. So the body has to make on its own at the expense of other nutrients, which is not really good scenario to be honest. For that reason, you supplement creatine. Nevertheless, there is only so much creatine that you can absorb in one serving. The rest causes some necessary extra work for the kidneys and eventually you just basically piss it away. Large amounts are usually the cause of stomach cramping and discomfort. Imagine you haven't eaten for a few days and you just got into an all-you-can-eat buffet, right? Rather than pig out as if there is no tomorrow, it would be much better to eat the food at small chunks so that the body can absorb it gradually. So your body stores creatine progressively rather than on few big chunks as suggested by the loading phase. Since most of the creatine in your body is stored in your muscles, then the bigger your muscles are, the more creatine you will be able to hold. A sudden increase in creatine will only affect if you have strength competition in the next 2-3 to three days. Nevertheless, since you don't have a sudden increase in muscle size, then you won't be able to keep those quantities and your body will get rid of them. Studies show that the proper amount of creatine is in the 5 to 10 grams range a day. This amount provides the best ratio of grams supplied to grams utilized. Generally, there are three major times in which you can take creatine. In the morning, before your workout and after your workout. Each time it has its own benefits and it really comes down to personal preference and convenience. Let's start with the morning serving. Your body tends to utilize nutrients very efficiently in the morning, so any vitamins, minerals or other supplements get a really good absorption rate. For that reason, many prefer getting creatine in the morning after their meal. This is also quite convenient as you have your creatine with you at home and you don't have to carry it later on in a shaker bottle or in a mini zip bag. The advantages of taking creatine before the workout is that it will slightly increase your strength and endurance due to the higher creatine levels. This is the reason why most of the pre-workout supplements include some form of creatine. As you already know, due to the regular supply of creatine, your creatine levels are already higher than normal. So while you get an extra boost, it won't be anything significant. The final best time to take creatine is just straight after your workout. This is due to your body's high absorption rate. At this time, your body is begging for nutrients and you will make the most bang for the buck from any supplement or food. It is also rather convenient as you can just put it in your shaker cup along with your fast absorbing carbs and whey protein. It's important to know that creatine monohydrate has very poor transportation abilities but binds very well to other nutrients. If creatine is taken on its own, part of it may stay in the stomach, thus leading to stomach discomfort. To be able to absorb creatine better, it is always good if you could consume it with some carbs and possibly protein. This is the reason why the majority of athletes take it after workout with their protein shake. Also, do not mix creatine in advance or buy liquid forms as creatine is unstable in liquid for a longer period of time. You mix it and you drink it straight away, as simple as that. Finally guys, let's check out the creatine myths and side effects. 
There's so many myths surrounding creatine that the whole video will not be enough to examine them all. And this one is getting pretty long anyway. So here are just some of the most common misconceptions. If you have any questions, feel free to post them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to respond. Creatine is often blamed for causing excess water retention. While it is true that it increases overall weight due to water retention, you shouldn't see it as a bad thing. About 70 to 75% of your muscles are made up of water anyway, and a well hydrated muscle has a high anabolic rate, leading to muscle growth. Having said that, you have to bear in mind that taking creatine also requires you to consume larger quantities of water. A good rule of thumb is adding an extra liter of water to your daily consumption. Another common myth is that creatine creates unstable mass and once you stop taking it, you just piss away your gains. Therefore no point taking it. Nothing is further from the truth guys. When you stop taking creatine, the levels in the body start to drop down back to normal. Less creatine means less water retention so you will eventually lose the weight as a result of lost water. This is not to say however that the gains you made during the hard and intensive training as a result of supplementing creatine are to be lost as well. You've put blood, sweat and tears to build up mass and as long as you continue to train and eat properly it is there to stay. In other words by hydrating your muscles and adding the energy cycle creatine is helping you get better workouts that lead to better results. The bottom point guys is that creatine monohydrate is a very well researched and safe supplement and unless you have any health related issues like experiencing kidney problems or having diabetes you shouldn't have problems with it. The majority of problems usually come from either taking inadequate amounts, in other words excessive amounts, or the extra ingredients put by the supplement companies to give it a competitive edge. Therefore it is best to start with a small amount, about 3 grams of the most basic type, creatine monohydrate. From then on, you can increase the amount or switch to a different tab if you can see no benefits from supplementing creatine monohydrate. Other types of creatine might have better absorption rate or they may have nutrients that can enhance your strength, recovery and so on. You have a plenty of choices here. Well guys, these were all the basics you need to know about creatine. If this video was helpful, please like it and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching, until next time.